Now, here we go, Askaritov. Let's see what he plays. D4. Bishop G4. <clears throat> so here you can play, that's the uh, Trumpovsky. You can play knight e4, kick the bishop right away. And then I just play with d5 to support the knight. Uh, you can play other ways. I think uh, c5 is a move there, but it's trickier. I like to just play something simple. He wants to trade off my knight. And let's uh, develop a piece and support the knight. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know the theory at this point. I'm just uh, playing what seems like logical moves. So he's got uh, an annoying pin on the um, e-pawn. If I fianchetto this bishop, then... Um, which is another way to develop it. It's looking at this structure here. But I could play c5 to undermine it, I suppose. Anyway, I like to get castled. <clears throat> Maybe I can uh, trap my bishop. Didn't think about that. Oh, he, he's not, you know, he could have considered uh, <laughs> playing. I, maybe he'd have to play g4 first, but if he plays g4, he could follow up with f3. And my bishop would have no squares. But uh, it looks like that's not a problem at this point. So unusual position here already. <laughs> he doesn't uh, doesn't want me to have a piece on e4. And he's going to quite a bit of trouble to prevent that. <clears throat> okay, well, we will just trade then. Okay, so I'm thinking knight to... Um, d7 followed by c5 is the way to play it maybe rook c8 first but he didn't um he didn't put his rook on the c file so let's go ahead and do this just to uh increase the power of this bishop on the dark the dark squared diagonal So he's going to support it with the knight. That's castle. I have to take right away. He can take and that opens up the bishop like I want. Although if he takes and then plays d5, then my bishop is shut down. I mean d4. He takes and plays d4. Kind of shuts down my bishop once again. Uh, so I can play knight to uh, e4, get a piece on e4 once again. And maybe I can play h6 and g5 and then trade off the bishop. <clears throat> so yeah, once again, he doesn't want me to... Uh, he doesn't want me to have a piece there. Okay, I'm just going to unpin my e-pawn and play for... Um, <clears throat> play for e5 here. Everything's protected here, so that move didn't really um, didn't really do much. There we go. So we got that kind of ram structure. The two pawns butting heads here. He has to take with a pawn. And um, I can grab the open files here. And I have a good bishop for this structure because I can always put pressure on this pawn with it. OK. 
Okay, so let's, um, in case my queen gets pulled away, let's uh, make sure this pawn is um, defended. Yeah, so he decided to relocate his bishop. Okay, so let's um, prepare to double here. <coughs> He's going to wind his bishop around to a defensive position there. So can I kick the queen away immediately, get it away from defense of that pawn? Can't go here, here, or here. Can drop back this way or this way. Let's see where it wants to go. Okay, and then let's see if I can invade on the seventh rank here. <clears throat> Maybe not. He can play the rook there. But he didn't. Okay, but if I put my queen on c7, c2 rather, and he brings his rook over, I take the rook, queen takes, I take, bishop takes, and I take the pawn. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if we can drive that queen away. Well, queen can't go just anywhere because it leaves the v-pawn hanging. Well, I think this is a good invasion. His bishop is just more passive than mine. But uh, well, I don't know if that's enough to win with. Let's uh, bring my king into the game. I can bring my bishop, I mean my rook back here to attack the pawn and he can defend there. But maybe I can do something with my king. <clears throat> if I go here, 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 four moves, he can just push his pawn up to stop me, but then I take the A-pawn. Here, let's, let's try it. Aha, uh -huh. so he wants to activate his bishop. And so he's going to put his, uh... ah, he's putting it there, okay. I don't particularly want the bishop trade. Or if we do trade bishops, I want to, you know, get get some advantage from it.
k. I'm probably I'm going to have to trade off that bishop to do anything here. <clears throat> keep keep pressure on his pawns here. Uh, keep his king from getting closer to my rook. Okay, yeah, I think I am going to have to trade off that bishop. <clears throat> or maybe not. You know, actually, he's got the bishop trapped now, so it can't go anywhere. Whereas my bishop is free to roam about the board, so maybe I can stir up some trouble here. <clears throat> Not really seeing it, actually. I'm going to try to bring my king over. If I can get to this square, I have a chance of winning this pawn. Okay, Askaritov, what's the plan here? My king is, I mean, my rook is keeping his king out of the game. And I um, can just lock these things up on dark squares. <clears throat> In fact, if I attack this pawn, how is he going to defend it? Go. I'm attacking it. It's a problem with this bishop. Uh, you know, it looks very solid there, defended by the pawns, but its uh, motions are really restricted. <coughs> hmm. Okay, I could check the king first. Or take first. Just go ahead and take here. And let's see. Check. Where's the king go? He goes there, I guess. Maybe I should move my bishop here so I can start... Uh, Pushing my pawn forward. Defend like that. Now I can check here, drive his king back, push the pawn forward, step by step, inch by inch, and notice how helpless his bishop is appearing at the moment. He's probably got a way to, to liberate it. There's usually some something black can do, but uh, it's or white. But he's got to move that bishop away somehow. Get it into the game. Okay, so check. Oh, he's running that way. Okay, uh, check. And I can push. I can 
push again. I just have to get my rook to uh, g1, right? And it's Coitens. Yeah, he finally moves his bishop, but I think it's too late here. He's got one check. <clears throat> but after that, well, maybe he's got a couple of checks. Check, I step back here. Check, I step here. I may have to walk around. To, <laughs> I may have to walk a ways to get away from all the checks. Oh, no, check, I go here, hitting the, the bishop. Yeah, it's a little counterintuitive to walk the king away from where the action is, but uh, it's just the right thing here. If he checks my king, I go to b7, so that doesn't help. Although, this only wins the exchange, I guess, right? I take his rook, he takes my bishop. And he even, um, okay, so he just gives up the whole rook. The king can't get in any closer. I'll come over and take this pawn next. <laughs> the bishop goes back. Back to its square. Okay, so check. Drive that king away. Attack this pawn. <clears throat> yeah, I could have saved the bishop, but uh, I don't really need it. Let's see. Is Am I outside the square of the pawn? I go here. He goes there. Yeah, I'm already, he's already outside the square of the pawn. <coughs> he can try and get his bishop into a position where it can stop the pawn, but it's not so easy. Okay, he resigned. Anyway, I thought that was a good example of uh, peace mobility and taking advantage of it in the end game. Because uh, the material was even when we went into that endgame. He just uh, locked his bishop in, in front of those pawns. So we'll check that out in the postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.